20th of March 2003, the ground invasion of Iraq began. A coalition of British, American, Australian and Polish forces moved on pre-arranged objectives with the overall task of deposing Saddam Hussein. The war was controversial at the time and still remains that even 20 years on. The reasons for the conflict and the legality of the invasion relating to Saddam's weapons of mass destruction was being disputed in the months leading up to the military intervention in Iraq. Anti-war protests were held across the world on the 15th of February 2003, opposing the war and its motives. In this video, we shall look at the beginning of the conflict from the British side of the invasion in the 20th anniversary year of the start of Operation Telic. On the 18th of March 2003, then Prime Minister Tony Blair makes his case for the British commitment to war in Parliament. This is the time for this House, not just this government or indeed this Prime Minister, but for this House to give a lead. To show that we will stand up for what we know to be right. To show that we will confront the tyrannies and dictatorships and terrorists who put our way of life at risk. To show at the moment of decision that we have the courage to do the right thing. I beg to move the motion. The vote for approval of British military action in Iraq was won by 412 votes. But not everyone was as convinced by Blair's government's case for war. MP John MacDonnell and future Shadow Chancellor had this to say. It may be impossible to prevent the Bush regime going to war, but we can still halt Britain being a party to this international atrocity. Yeah. Our vote tonight could withdraw any moral or political authority to take this country to war. Without the overwhelming support of this House, no Prime Minister can be confident he has the backing of the British people for war, and thus have the right to lead our people into this unknown risk. If the Prime Minister does proceed to take us to war on this coalition, not of the willing, but of the <coughs> killing, I say very clearly, yes, not in my name, not in the name of thousands of Labour Party members up and down the country, not in the name of the British people, to our communities, we say continue the campaign for peace to shorten this war and prevent the next. The day before, a 48-hour warning is made to Saddam Hussein and his sons to leave the country or a military intervention would do so. Two days later, on the 19th, a speech is made by George Bush addressing the American public. Now that conflict has come, the only way to limit its duration is to apply decisive force. And I assure you, this will not be a campaign of half measures, and we will accept no outcome but victory. In the hours after this speech is made, the first shots of the war are fired. Target Baghdad allies launch 500 cruise missiles in a day. Commander of the invasion warns we're using munitions on a scale never seen before. On the eve of the invasion, Lieutenant Colonel Tim Collins of the 1st Battalion, Royal Irish Regiment, makes a speech to his men. His words were transcribed by journalist Sarah Oliver. The speech was recreated by Kenneth Branner in a 2008 drama, Ten Days to War. We are going into Iraq to liberate and not to conquer. We will not fly our flags in their country. Now there are some who are alive at this moment who will not be alive shortly. Those of them who do not wish to go on that journey, we will not send them. As for the others, I expect you to rock their world. Wipe them out, if that's what they choose. If you are ferocious in battle, remember to be magnanimous in victory. Iraq is steeped in history. It is the site of the Garden of Eden, of the Great Flood. It is the birthplace of Abraham. You tread... You tread lightly there. On the morning of the 20th of March, British troops entered Iraq from Kuwait to help seize the port of Umqazar and capture the city of Basra, among other objectives. 
One thing I remember from that time was the sheer amount of rolling news coverage of the invasion. I remember vividly almost all of the four major TV channels here in the UK seemed to be simultaneously broadcasting minute by minute coverage of the war in real time. Something that I had not personally experienced before. It enthralled my younger self. I used to sit in front of the 24 hour news networks for hours to see what was going on. Most of the footage in this video comes from those news reports. Basra, tantalizingly close, but still beyond the reach of British troops. As the invasion went on, the battle for Basra became one of the most covered engagements of Operation Telic. As Iraqi regulars and former Iraqi troops still loyal to Saddam resisted the British advance, on the 27th of March, 14 Challenger 2 tanks from the Royal Scots Dragoon Guards were moving across a pontoon bridge to rendezvous with Royal Marine Commandos further south, when 14 Iraqi T-55 tanks emerged from a wooded area. This battle became known as the 14 to nil engagement, as the Challenger 2 tanks easily knocked out their Iraqi counterparts with no loss to their own. A British tank officer told the press, It's like a bicycle against a motor car. This action was the biggest tank battle undertaken during the operation, and the biggest British tank battle since 1945. Azar itself was finally fully occupied on the 6th of April. Operation Telic lasted for four weeks. However, further iterations under the Telic name would continue until 2009 to help the Iraqis transition from Saddam's regime. As mentioned at the start of the video, Operation Telic remains controversial 20 years on, during the next few weeks on the channel, I'll be conducting interviews with those who served during the operation to get their view on their time in Iraq. Do join me again for when they go live. Please subscribe if you haven't already done so, and I'll catch you again soon.